great God, ever reliable, ever dependable. Shall we all lift up our two hands to heaven and return thanks to him for seeing the last Sunday of the month of August and thank him for bringing you and I into his presence today. For blessed is the man that God chooses that he calls to approach unto him. They shall be satisfied with the goodness of his house, even of his holy temple. Now give him glory. Give him praise. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Now ask him to speak to you in person today. Jesus, speak to me today. Like never before. By your word, bring an end to every issue on my heart. Empower me today to take delivery of my total health heritage. Let your agenda of exemption deliver in my favor today. Thank you, Father, in Jesus. precious name we have prayed. Lord Jesus, honor your word today and let what is declared be practically delivered. Amen. Let everyone's desire be turned to testimony today. Amen. Take all the praise. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. My case is different because I'm redeemed of the Lord. And as a covenant child, what afflicts others is not permitted to afflict me. Congratulations. 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 Please give the Lord a big hand and get seated. Amen. Most great things come in very simple ways. Having spent 12 years with the plague of Israel's blood, and have you spent all your living upon physicians and could not be healed? And then suddenly a touch. How? What's the scientific implication of a touch? A touch of a cloth, not touch of a drug. How did you get healed? Simply by a touch of faith. Simply by what? A touch of faith. Now, let me tell you something, it will stir your faith. I was in Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, 1984. <laughs> and suddenly the voice of the Lord came, there is a place for you on top if you're interested. I said, I'm interested. Every bright thinking person is interested in the top. I'm interested. He said, then whatever I tell you to do, do it. <laughs> eh? Is that all? Whatever I tell you to do, what? have to struggle to succeed. Whatever it tells you to do, do, do it. You don't have to struggle to succeed. Have I ever prayed, oh Lord, let me succeed? No. Whatever it tells you to do, do, do it. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. It looks so simple. <laughs> but some won't just do nothing. Even when he tells them directly, they won't do it. When he speaks on the altar, they don't care. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. I read only the term. Twenty-eight verse one, and the verse of the Lord Sunday. When he said, "If you will diligently listen to my voice and do all that I command you to do, I will set you on high above all nations of the earth." As simple as that. Yeah. Everything about God comes down simple because He's speaking to all men, learned and unlearned, literate and illiterate. Everything about God comes down simple. Man. That's it. Yes, so, since he told me the way to the top, I'm addicted to anything he tells me to do. How you feel, I don't care. You have your right to your personal feelings. <laughs> but I know where I'm going. Whatever he tells you to do, I do it. That's the way you can.
can't outgrow instructions mm -hmm. or you end up in frustrations. Nobody ever outgrows instructions. Can you outgrow eating? No, sir. Hello? Hello, sir. Can you outgrow breathing? That I've been breathing all these years. I mean, by now I should retire. Try it. Retire from breathing. I will help you write your story. That somebody retired from breathing and we are happy to write his story because he has gone to the great beyond. Eh? The chariot of Elijah has carried him. <laughs> because he's retired. Instructions are the highways to distinctions. Those who don't mind the instruction won't change position. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. So he told me, get out of Kaduna. Oh yeah, go, oh, thank you. Get down from ministering to 3,000 people to ministering to under 300 people. Yes, Lord. Now, now, grace came, glory came. Get out of Lagos. Eh? So we are to the forest. Okay, Lord, thank you. And I once told you, if my wife said no, it won't matter. I'll be gone. I'll be in this place. If all the elders gather together and say, we're not going, that's, I will lock the place. That place where you say you will go because it's me God gave. I will lock it up. Bad luck. Chain. Don't enter. <laughs> because the cheapest way to the top, whatever he tells you to do, do it. No procrastination, no adjustment. Many of us adjust many things. If God told you, bring your Isaac, you go and carry Ishmael. Look at this. Maybe God didn't know the difference between the two of them. God, I present to you Ishmael with all my heart. This is the trouble of my family. He said, take Isaac. And he did it. Everyone that got their way to the top, they got there by obeying God. Somebody's level is changing. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. In the name of Jesus the Christ, whatever is loaded into this month, you won't miss any iota of your portion. Yeah. I will bring you earth and kill. People mocking you will start envying you. Because you won't be found where you used to be again. Somebody believe that, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. For every provision, God's commandment is receive it, believe it, and you'll be empowered to become it. If you won't receive it and believe it, you cannot be empowered to become it. John 1, 12. Now, when I saw that he took my infirmity, he bore my sicknesses, I received it. It didn't last, thing, you know, sound scientific, but I received it, and I believed it, hook, line, and sinker, and I shouted my faith on the house top. I will, I can never be sick because he took my place in sickness. He bore my sicknesses and carried my pains. And there is no way they said he returned it. So he took it away forever. Now, wait a minute. The sicknesses and diseases you used to know before this service, you will see them no more again forever. God can do anything, but God won't believe for you. Will God believe for anybody else? Blessed is he that believeth on his own. <laughs> Let's have a performance of those things we God said. God will not believe for me. He will not believe for you. He tells you what to believe. You choose to believe or not. I shouted here, yeah, I can never be sick. I would rather die than doubt God. No, not when he shows me. What you have not seen, you may doubt. Yes, sir. What you have heard, you may be confused. Yes, but when you see, even if you are Thomas, you believe it. Yes, sir. When Thomas saw his hand, he said, my Lord, my God. He said, put your hand. He said, I don't need to put my hand. I've seen it. I've seen the hole in your hand. Somebody's free. Is it possible to live a sickness-free life? You are not sounding like you believe it. You'll be the next testimonial of a sickness free life. <laughs> now, let me ask you this question one more time and answer it personally. Is it possible for a man, a woman, to live a totally sickness free life? Yeah. 
Do you believe it? That himself took your infirmity and bore your sicknesses? Do you believe it? Now, in the name of Jesus, you never carry any of them again. You never carry any of them again. In Jesus' name. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. Now, it's told us what to do right now. Operation must pray. Are you praying? Must go. Are you going? Must bring. Are you inviting nobody? I must nurture. Are you nurturing anyone or to perfection or to establishment? It's all left to you. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. Do it. Oh. Do it. It's the steps up. The topmost top in life. I had it from God. And from that time, anything he tells me to do and he tells us to do through my mouth, I jump into it first. Tells you to do it, do it. It changes your story. It changes your story. We change levels by obedience. That's how we change levels. We change levels by obedience, not by documentation of teachings. We change levels by obedience. As we behold them as in a glass and we do what he says us to do, we are changed from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory. Amen. Abraham's life was changing from Genesis chapter 12 to Genesis chapter 17 to Genesis chapter 22. It was changing level by level at the response of his obedience to everything God says. Do it. It's within your power to do it. You only need to make a choice to do it. Do whatever it tells you to do. We flew into Lagos early morning of Saturday. Uh, 20 minutes now, got into you know, covenant hour of prayer and then got myself ready, moved out on the field. We got 484 souls yesterday. 484 souls. Amen. Fainting and fighting. Fainting and fighting. I don't need anybody's applause. I don't need nobody's clapping. I don't need, I'm not trying to impress nobody. I'm simply obeying God. For my next level of change, I know he has many next levels for me. Mm. I know that. I, and I know I will only get there by obeying him. Wow. So it's my delight, it's my joy. Join me in this madness. It's the key to greatness. Join me in this madness. Your level won't stop changing. Amen. Wait a minute. That is how it is simple obedience. Since I decided to walk in obedience to the covenant of abundance, mm. I have never prayed for anything material in my life. Money, food. My home has never prayed for food. Never. Pray for school fees? Never. I don't know when they pay. We just pay this all, always what to pay with and pay for other people's children. Time and again, over and again, you see, our biggest question is the obedience question. I pray that your total package of health and vitality shall be made fully manifest this month. Yeah. Somebody believe that, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Very quickly, for every provision in the kingdom, God has made available the way to assess in them, the way to actualize in them. And so is his healing covenant. We are healed by the word, we are healed by the anointing, we are healed by the name, and so on and so forth. But today we're looking at the healing power of the name of Jesus. The healing power in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is not a religious accolade. The name of Jesus is not a conjunction in prayer. The name of Jesus is not a song. The name of Jesus, Jesus is a weapon of war. What do I call it? It's a weapon of war with guaranteed victory in every battle. The name of Jesus is a weapon of war with guaranteed victory in any battle. You know, 
Moses had a rod in his, in his hand. He said, God said, what is in thy hand? Moses said, what about? He said, rod. Oh, ah, you don't know what you are carrying. <laughs> that is the rod of deliverance. Amen. That is the rod of God that terminates the afflictions of men and rescues men from bondage and captivity. What is that in your hand? A rod? He said, a rod? Okay, cast it down. He became a serpent. Ah! I said, serpent, mungu kakiri. I've been carrying serpent about without knowing. He said, if you run, he will bite you. Now take it by the tail. So he can use the mouth to kill you. <laughs> he took it by the tail. And then he became a rod man. Uh-huh. What's that in your heart? <laughs> I don't know the name of God. <laughs> there are not things we are carrying without knowing what they are. Such is what the name of Jesus is. Some don't know next to nothing about the name. Again, wrote a book, big volume, on the name of Jesus. What an opening of eye that to me. The name of Jesus. It's one of his hottest books in those early days. The name of Jesus. There you see your legal right to engage that name. And the commitment of God's integrity to back it up. So we just mention the name. Okay, Father, thank you for it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let me remember what else to say. <laughs> because we don't know what it is. Now, what is in that name that he is? Say with me, the anointing on Christ. That he saw man of sickness and disease is on that name. Is in that name. Remember, Jesus came down healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Matthew 4 23. All manner. Everybody say all manner. Say it loud. All manner. All manner of sickness and disease. He went about doing good. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. So, what was healing people was the anointing on him. He went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. And it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So his anointing is upon his name. Amen. You have the governor of a state, as it were, anointed to head the state. Now, wherever you mention his name, the authority on him answers on your behalf. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, the governor sent me here this morning. Now, from the gate, they open the gate to you. Yes, yes. Reception, excuse me, sir. just a minute. Somebody from the governor, somebody from the governor here. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> the authority on that name is what he's speaking. Mm. So when you carry the name of Jesus, you carry the anointing on that name. Oh, yes. Wow. Whatever bows to him, bows to you. Amen. Whatever opens the door to him, opens the door to you. Is somebody can get what I'm saying? Jesus carried the anointing without measure. John 3, 14. The anointing of the Holy Ghost was without measure in his life. And if you know what that means, it shall come to pass in that day that the Burden of the wicked shall be taken from your shoulder, his yoke from your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing on Jesus destroys yokes, destroys bandages of sickness, of disease, of satanic oppression. Now, the anointing on him is upon his name. So when you invoke his name by faith, the anointing on that name goes forth to deliver according to his capacity. So it's not my anointing, it's not your anointing. The anointing on his name goes into action. I brought this in here for an uh, illustration. And then you have big on stuff in your house and your house is infested with mosquitoes and then you turn it on and the mosquitoes bow down. They come crashing down. No resistance. You disarm them. You dislodge them. You bring them down. That's what happens to the name. He said, because of the service of thy good ointment, thy name is as ointment poured for. Therefore, do the
Virgins love thee. We are the virgins of Christ. The church is the bride of Jesus Christ. He's the bridegroom. When you invoke that name, the anointing on him goes forth to launch an attack against your attackers and is ever sure to bring them down. It will never, that name cannot return defeated. The anointing on Christ cannot be defeat, defeated in battle. So, in the name of Jesus. Oh, you are just Spray the atmosphere with the venom of deliverance. With the venom of deliverance. With the venom of healing. Now, in the name of Jesus, every manner of sickness and disease that came with anyone into this service shall not return back home with you. Because the anointing upon Christ is in that name. Thank you, Jesus. It's in that name. What is in this name that he is? In Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, talking about Jesus, that wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name. It's a gift of the Father to his Son. That at the name of Jesus, every name should bow. Now, wait a minute. He gave him a name above every other name. So whatever has a name bows to the authority of this name. Amen. Whatever has a name. Now, <laughs> there is no sickness doctor won't find a name for. It can be a new generic name. They will find it. Amen. It looks like this, so let him bear a name that's closer to it. They always find a name. Some sicknesses, to call the name itself is, is enough to make you sick. That is, the name is so corner, 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 corner that call it, you need to twist your tongue many times. Whatever has a name by a decree of heaven bows to this name. Amen. By a decree of the Father God. The name, the name, the name. The dominion of Christ. And the Father judgeth no man, he has committed all judgment to the Son. The dominion of Christ resides in that name. So when you invoke that name in faith, it dominates your circumstances. I mean, Christ dominates your circumstances. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in heart, and of things underneath the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Philippians 2, 9 to 11. The dominion of Christ over God's creation dwells in that name. For the time coming, when the Son of Man shall hear, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man, and they that hear shall what? The dominion of Christ resides in that name. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ. You remember the gift and callings of God are without repentance? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When Elisha died, they buried him, and then... <laughs> It's a long time, so the dry bones of Elijah was in that in their sepulchre. And when they saw the army of the enemy come in, they threw a dead man they were carrying for burial into that sepulchre. When he touched the dry bones of Elijah, he revived because the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Whatever God gives is there forever. So the gift of that name that gives it dominion is forever. Remember, Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13:8. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree your dominion today over all sicknesses and diseases. 
You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. How many believe here, and I'm asking that again, to live a sickness-free and pain-free life the remaining days of your life? How many believe it? If you will receive that and believe it in your heart, you are empowered to live like that. You won't know the meaning of pains again. You won't know the meaning of discomforts again. You believe me, let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. What else is in that name that he is? Now we are told in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, his name shall be called what? Wonderful. Simply put, full of wonders. And his name is Jesus. So the name Jesus is ordained of God to be full of wonders. When you invoke that name, signs and wonders erupt. Signs and wonders take place. The unusual happen. The man Elias has kept his bed for 12 years, been sick of palsy, and then Peter looked at him, Elias, Jesus Christ, make it the whole. Make thy bed. And he arose immediately. That's no healing. That's a sign. That's a wonder. You recover in healing. You are turned around by signs and wonders. That name is loaded with signs and wonders. Philip went out to Samaria and preached Christ. Who is Christ? What does he carry? What is his name? And there was joy in the city, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did by preaching Christ. By preaching Christ. The name of Jesus is full of wonders. The name of Jesus is full of wonders. Take it. Believe it. That's how you can administer healing and deliver for yourself. Isaiah 52 verse 1. He said, awake. Awake. Put on strength. Oh Zion. Zion means the church. Put on thy beautiful garment. You shouldn't be wearing sickly dresses. No. Put on beautiful garments. Oh captive daughter of Jerusalem. He said, therefore, there shall no more come to thee all that mock your life. Shake thyself from the dust and sit. Down. Stop running around. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bars of thy neck. O captive daughter of Zion. You can shake your feet from the dust and walk into liberty by invoking the forces that are inherent in the name of Jesus. Amen. By his grace, I got me out of tuberculosis at the age of 16. But I said, Jesus, if it is true that you did what they say you did, yes. do it now. <laughs> Boy, make you no vex. I'll do it, take it out of you. Now, 48 years after, I'm still bouncing. Amen. You can get yourself out of trouble. Amen by invoking the forces that are inherent in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Understand this, please. It will help your life forever. Everything you are now will ever need is in that name. Science and wonders is the solution to all human problems. It is the intervention of God that engenders science and wonders. And God cannot intervene without your position changing. When God stands to fear, something must turn. Something must turn. So today, everything remaining about your head must turn on this platform. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Now, what is required for this name to deliver its potentials in my life? What must I do? So make the most of what this name carries. One, 
You must be born again. You must be born again. He said in Mark 16, verse 15 and 16, he said, go you to all the world and preach the gospel, whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved, whosoever believes not shall be damned. Then he said, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. So the name only delivers in them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, in my name, in my name. So the name delivers only in the hands of the redeemer of the Lord. Number two, we saw, I mean, uh, case number two, we saw how some vagabonds called the sons of Scaphar were engaging the name to cast out devils. In Acts chapter 19, verse 13 to 16, and the devil said, what? Who are you? You mean you can see what they are saying? They passed on them and turned them naked because they don't have a legal right to that name. After you are born again, you have the power of attorney to use that name. You are, have the legal right to engage that name in battle. Therefore, for every child of God, this name will never fail to deliver in your life. Those who are going to become children of God today, it will deliver in your life also. Number two, how do I make the most of what God is for me? Have a revelation of what that name is worth, which is what I've been doing since the meeting began, this service began. Have a revelation, have a spiritual understanding of what that name carries. Because every provision in the kingdom delivers according to our levels of understanding. Matthew 13 and verse 23. That which fell on good ground, I did I receive the word and understanded it and went forth and brought forth fruit. Some 100 fold, some 60 fold and some 30 fold. So what the word delivers is a function of our depth of spiritual understanding. So have a revelation of what that name carries. Have a revelation of that name, what that name carries. And number three, walk in the light of that revelation. Walk in the light of that revelation. Number four, engage the name of Jesus in prayer to free yourself from the afflictions of life. Is any afflicted, James 5, 13, let him pray. Let him pray to free himself. Let him pray. Now, what is the guarantee for answered prayers? John 14, 13 and 14. He said, Verily I say unto you, and he said, Whosoever, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. It shall be seen that your joy may be full. Now, where you are seated, I'd like you to cry like Bartimaeus. Jesus, Jesus set me free from this affliction today. In the name of Jesus, I receive my liberty from this affliction today. Look at that affliction in the face and confront it. Hypertension, high blood pressure, diabetes. Look at it in the face and scream the name of Jesus at it. For when I cry, there is a man in his This I know, for God is for me. Now, engage in a cry. A cry of faith. Jesus, set me free today from this affliction once and for all in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, precious name we are praying. The afflictions 
that to no till day you see them no more again forever. <laughs> On this covenant day of exemption, it's important for us to appreciate the fact that God has an exemption plan for his children. It's an age-long plan. It's been there forever. And at redemption, we are redeemed to be peculiar. What afflicts others is not permitted to touch us because we are now a peculiar people, a royal priesthood and holy nation. We are redeemed to show for the face of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his own dear son. So we are not ordained to be partakers of their troubles because our case is ordained to be different by redemption. Come and say, by redemption? My case is ordained to be different. What afflicts them is not permitted to afflict me. What buffets them is not permitted to buffet me. Because I'm redeemed to be peculiar. I'm redeemed to be peculiar. Let me hear your loudest amen if you're there. You are redeemed to be peculiar. You are redeemed to be peculiar. I'm redeemed to be peculiar. He said, God said, I'm the Lord I change now. Whatever his plan was, is his plan today and will remain his plan tomorrow. We saw the manifestation of his exemption plan in Israel, in the people, among the people of God that were dwelling in Israel, they dwell in Egypt. We are God's people dwelling in this corrupt earth. But God said, where you dwell is not permitted to impart on you because you're a peculiar person. You'll be the light of that world. You'll be the salt of that earth because we are redeemed to be peculiar. Now, when they were in Egypt, like we're on the earth today, Certain plagues visited the land. First was the plague of flies, swarm of flies. Wherever you find flies, you find stench. You find decadence. Chapter 8 of Exodus and verse 24. But the Bible says in verse 24 that, and the Lord this one, there, was, there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, into the house of all his servants, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. But hear what the Lord said. But only in the land where the children of Israel dwelt, there was no flies. Verse 26. No swarm of flies. Nothing decayed in their hand. Now watch it. Nothing is permitted to decay in your house. Your career will not decay. Your children will not decay. Your business will not decay. Your health will not decay. And then came the death of Catus. And every cattle of Egypt was slain. According to scriptures. But not one cattle of the children of Israel died. God made a difference. Exodus chapter 9. God made a difference between Israel and the Egyptians. None of their cattle died. Cattle could know their business. A thousand percent may collapse on your side and 10,000 on your left side, they will never come near you. <laughs> Exodus chapter 9 and verse 6 and 7. The death of Catus did not afflict them because they were God's people and God's agenda of exemption was at work in their land, was at work in their hand. None of their cattle died none of your endeavors will collapse. Yeah. Then they had the plague of hail and tempest. 
with fire, which connotes devastations and destructions. Devastations and destructions. We read some testimonies today, one from U.S., where a tornado hit, and all the buildings here are leveled, all the ones here are leveled, all the other ones here are behind level. Only that house was standing. Only that house was standing. Tornado doesn't know anybody, but knows God. When you are in league with God, tornadoes will bow to you. Can I hear your amen? We had Pata's testimony from Port Harcourt. 18 vehicles burned to ashes, filling station burned down, two police stations burned down, and the car was standing in the midst of the fire. No tire burst, no smell of fire. They drove the car out of the fireplace. God's exemption plan is real. Hallelujah. You will not miss out of it. Miss the global heat, the global economic heat that is hitting the world today will never affect your life and your household. <laughs> we had a testimony today why all the houses here, there was a trailer that ran into a store and the foil. Bust open and was born and everything. This son of God just coming in from Shiloh, and that was it. All the houses in front, all the houses behind, and only a shop was left. In the they started shouting, You are using the Abulika power to protect yourself. And they say, I'm just coming from Shiloh, you don't know anything. Exemption, exemption. What torments others will never torment you. Let me say it here. What to hear is valuable, but what to believe is what delivers the real value. What to hear gives you an opportunity to determine what to believe. But what to believe in the ultimate is what delivers the real values. Every word of scriptures delivers on faith. No faith, no fulfillment of scriptures. believe in the reality of God's divine agenda of exemption over your life. Believe in it. Nobody here will ever bury his children. <laughs> because when the plague of death hit Egypt, not one soul, not even the beast of God's people died. Exodus chapter 11 and verse 7. Not even the beast that belongs to the children of Israel died. He said that thou mayest know how the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Man. That is God. He said, I am the, I'm the Lord. I change not. He has vowed to put a difference between you and the rest of the world. Receive that. Believe it. And become it. Nothing that affects the world around you will affect you anymore forever. Yeah. Well, to see this happen, receive the revelation of your exemption right in Christ. Believe in that revelation. And walk in the reality of that revelation. Let it form your thinking. Let it dictate your steps of action. You believe in the reality of God's exemption agenda for your life. Because what you receive and believe what you empower to become. John 1:12. What you receive and believe is what you are empowered to become. Receive it, believe it, operate like it. Operate in the reality of it. You find it established in your life. You never suffer affliction again. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Lift up your right hand to heaven and give God thanks for his exemption plan over your life. Give God thanks.
for his exemption plan over your life. Give him thanks, give him glory. Your case is truly different. Celebrate God for it. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. You are in this fourth service and you know that you know that you know that you are not born again yet. That is the number one step to a world of total health. You don't give the food of children and give it out to dogs. That's what Jesus said. And he's not talking about physical dogs, he's talking about those who are outside the kingdom. Those who are outside the kingdom. Since you have access to the kingdom, enter in today and enjoy the blessings of that kingdom in the now. So wherever you are, you want to surrender your life to Christ. You want to be a beneficiary of God's exemption plan in these days of horror. Wherever you are, stand to your feet and I pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. Everyone that wants to surrender his life to Christ today and become a child of God, please stand to your feet. God bless you wherever you are. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody else is standing up wherever you are. Get up on your feet. I'll pray for you right there. I pray for you right there. Stand on your feet. Jesus, save my soul today. I want to enjoy the blessedness of redemption on earth. I want to enjoy your exemption plan and agenda over my life. I want to inherit eternity at the end of my journey. Stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. Now, there are also people here that Somebody else is standing wherever you are, get up on your feet right now. Now, everybody standing both in the first and second call, would you please move to the nearest eye to where you are? Some church officials are there. They will assist you in filling out your card. And things will turn around in your favor today. Amen. You believe it, let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. They will help you fill out your card immediately. While you are doing that, have you noticed you are sitting on brand new chairs? Have you noticed that today? Now, these chairs are dedicated to Jesus. Every sick that sits on this chair is declared healed. Every oppressed and afflicted that sits on these chairs, they are declared delivered. I pray today that everyone that sits on this chair, new things will start happening in their life. In the name of Jesus, whatever this commission carries rests on each of these chairs today. A family was hit with tuberculosis and they sat down here. They brought them in, father, son, two children. And after 30 minutes of sitting down, the father looked at the mother. The man looked at his wife. The wife looked at the man. Ah, it appears this call fears God. For 30 minutes they had not come, and that was the last call for their life. Jesus set them free by sitting down here. In the same manner, I decree that this church will keep emitting the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' precious name. Everybody standing, will you please bow your heads for prayers? Lift up your right hand and pray this prayer of faith after me. Saying, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again to set me free right now. I believe my sins are forgiven. I am born again. I'm now set free from the past of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me. Thank you, Jesus, for making me a child of God. Amen. Now keep your hands up. In the name of Jesus, I decree God's blessings upon your life. 
and I place upon your forehead the blood of Jesus. I cover you with that blood. No force from hell shall draw you back from following Christ. You shall run this race to the end. And from now begin to enjoy the blessings of the kingdom. And so shall it be. The name of Jesus will keep answering in your life. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Amen. Please submit your cards to those church officials around with you. And we'll be in touch with you. We are looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at the Believers Foundation classes. You go for only two Mondays and you're empowered to live a triumphant Christian life. Shall we all rise, please? Shall we all rise? Thank you, Jesus. If you notice in the New Testament, everyone that cried out in that name got attention from Christ. Amen. Amen. When God stands to give you attention, your situation has changed. Jesus! Son of David! Have mercy! Jesus stood still. He said, call him here. Call him here. He wasn't saying, Jesus, son of David. Jesus! Because when I cry, there shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. Psalm 56, verse 9. This I know. This I know. This I know. A cry of faith will always deliver. I'd like you to engage in a cry of faith against that affliction. Once and for all. Don't do it casually. Don't do it religiously. Be raw. Be raw. Be raw. Be raw about it. Be raw about it. There's a place for a cry. You don't cry, you may start weeping. There's a place for a cry. You can shout down on their knees. On the enemies, you can shout down on your affliction. Now, in a moment, I'd like you to take responsibility. Jesus must hear me today. I must secure his attention today. Amen. His attention will bring me his intervention, yes, sir. and that will change my position. Amen. Now, name any affliction you know, buffet in your mind, and cry your loudest cry Jesus Christ, set me free. From this now, set me free from that now. Deliver me today from every affliction in my body. Jesus Christ, set me free now. Rewrite my story now. Rewrite my story today. Jesus Christ, deliver me from this state of weakness. Jesus Christ, set me free from this affliction today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. God is leading me to do something with you today. You are going to see the raw power of God in manifestation. My son told me, he said, one day during the time my wife's head was challenged, I said, David, come on here. When I pray, God hears. That's where my confidence is. When I call on him, he answers me. Like he has promised to answer anybody else. But he responds to me when I pray. One of my sons had the system crash. Kidney gone, liver gone, put on life support, gasping for his life. But I prayed for him online by telephone in a Dubai hospital. In the name of Jesus. And he said it was like a fan came into the room.
a fan and blew at him. Blew at him. Kidney picked up, liver picked up, removed all the job, and walked out of the place. Now, I'm going to pray for you. If there's any area of your life that's tormented, you know where it is, put your hand on it. I'm going to pray this two minutes prayer and every affliction tormenting you in any part of your body, everything resisting your fruitfulness, everything discomforting your life, we get off you now. There shall be creative miracle now. Yes. Peter said, silver or gold have I known, yes. but yes. such as I have given to thee. In the name of Jesus, yes. and his feet and ankle bones receive strength. Creative miracles happen by the name. Therefore, put your hand on there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every affliction in that your body is rooted out now. In the name of Jesus. Every terminal disease is terminated now in the name of Jesus. Every blood disease, hypertension, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer of the blood, I command them out of your body now in the name of Jesus. in your body disappears now in the name of Jesus. That affliction in your head disappears today in the name of Jesus. Every dying or dead organ in your body bounces back to life in the name of Jesus. Bounces to life now in the name of Jesus. Every pain in every part of your body, waist pain, back pain, neck pain, leg pain, whatever represents any form of pain, I command them rooted out of your life now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, it is over. Whatever you could not do before, begin to do it right now. Check your body, the great physician has taught you. Jesus has brought a turn around in your life. Come and lift up your two hands and celebrate God. Give him glory, give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Would you say his healing praise? Anyone who has been taught by God, carry your Bible in your bags, come down to the front. We wave our hands to Jesus and we close in the service. Are you ready for it? The healing power of God is still flowing. You are returning a new man. Something has taken place in your life right now. Share your testimony so you don't lose them. Share them so you don't lose them. Appear to the priest. You may not need to speak a word. Just to let you know Jesus has touched me. Hallelujah. And then your testimony is received in God, with God, and then you are made whole. You are perfected. The both testimonies multiply in your life in the name of Jesus. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. How many will say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. For setting me free today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Rafa is the Lord. Jehovah Rafa is the Lord. Jehovah Rafa is the Lord. He is the Lord that He led me. Jehovah Rapha. Yes, He's the Lord.
number of instant testimonies is a clear evidence that the great physician, physician is in our midst. And his name is who? His name is who? Jesus. Lift up your two hands and give him thanks in one second. Celebrate him. Magnify him for touching you today for your long-awaited turnaround. Thank you, Jesus. This is the proof that yours has arrived. You have your own healing now. You have your own testimony now. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now for this instant testimony, Jesus, we give you a time. For those who have come out here, we thank you for them. For those who are now there, they are sitting in their respective place, we say thank you for them. For those who online who have caught their healing, we say thank you for them. In Jesus' precious name. Please get seated. Let's read a few of these testimonies to the glory of God. Who is the healer? Jesus. Who is the miracle worker? Jesus. Who is the one that sets free the captives? Who is the one that sets free the afflicted? Jesus. Who is it that opens the prison doors? Jesus. Give this Jesus a big, big hand of praise. Please, if you hear your name, come down here quickly so we can see you. Yes. John, 30 day, 90 days erection dysfunction, healed by the power of God. Amen. Mrs. Philo Adeoye, 20 years ulcer pain gone by the power of God. Amen. Fred Okoruni, 8 years rat bite healed by the power of God. Hallelujah. That affliction goes back to sender. Chigose Frederick, 7 years noise in the head healed instantly by the power of God. Hallelujah. Good news, brother, good news. Three days urinating blood stopped instantly by the power of God. Three years partial paralysis healed instantly. Hallelujah. Stay here. It's gone forever. You'll never see it again. Ubabuku Dabirechi. Paralysis in the face for five years, healed by the power of God. Hallelujah. Bridget Ugoma, four years internal heat gone by the power of God. Amen. Are you excited about what the Lord is doing? Beodun David, 24 years, voice challenge, healed by the power of God. Where is he? Who is that? Come on quickly. Voice challenge. Couldn't speak out or what? Come, come. Beodun David. Beodun David, wherever you are. Carry on. Michael. Michael Omali. 10 years, stomach also healed by the power of God. Adebayo Bolanle, eight years operation spot healed instantly by the power of God. Amen. Owale Eliojo, four years heat in the body, internal heat, heat healed by the power of God. Amen. John Chinasa. One year chest pain healed by the power of God. Chidibere Okereke, six month chest pain gone by the power of God. Glory Angel Orewele, three month rheumatism healed by the power of God. Amen. Ademola Omotayo, two weeks severe weakness all over the body. Healed by the power of God. Shall we all rise to our feet, everybody? We can't go through all these testimonies at this time. We need to give room for the fifth service to come in. Lift up your two hands, everyone. 
All those who have come out here for instant testimony, thank God because whatever he does is forever. Yours is forever. No reversal. The case is sealed in heaven. No reversals. Give God thanks. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody lift up your two hands. Thank God for the encounter of today. It shall last you your lifetime. In the name of Jesus. Now, go in peace. The week is declared your week of testimony. Nothing planted of the devil will return back home with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Note that this Wednesday is a very important Wednesday for us. It's going to be a Passover service. We're having the blood of sprinkling. God will separate you between the world around you. Nothing that afflicts them will ever afflict you. It is a commandment of the Holy Ghost to set you apart for a life of total health and vitality. A covering against the horrors of death. No untimely death will be recorded in anyone's family anymore. <laughs> be there, it's holding at the same time in all of our Zona Fellowship Centers. Go to the one nearest to where you are, and Jesus will touch you there. Jesus is Lord. Are you excited today? Please, all of the leaders that are involved with the Empowerment Summit for the month, prepare for you. It's an honor and a privilege for you and I to be called to serve. What a privilege. May none of us abuse it. Everyone is expected to be gathered down here in Canaan land at seven o'clock. We shall not be holding the covenant hour of prayer that morning. We will join it together with that empowerment summit at seven o'clock. So get ready to be there in Jesus' name. You will not hurt God throughout your life. Whatever he says will suit your life and you keep going places for it. Lift up your two hands, everybody. Go in peace. May the joy of today be forever in your life. This operation continues, and I pray that what God has packaged for you in operation must pray, go, bring, and nurture shall be fully delivered. Now shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship, surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall do the praise of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. My case is different because I'm redeemed of the Lord and as a covenant child what afflicts others is not permitted to afflict me. Congratulations. Keep going with a broad smile on your faces. Give Jesus a laughter as you go. It's your time. It's your season. Get excited about it. Get excited about it. It's a new day and a new dawn. God's writing your story already. 